Hi guys! Hey everyone! Welcome to Make2 and an updated walkthrough of how we record and create mobile gaming videos for YouTube. This time talking about how we set up the Elgato HD60 Pro Capture device. Thanks so much to Elgato Gaming, they sent us one of these so we could use it on our channel. Years ago, we did another video about our whole process of making mobile gaming videos where we talked about all the different programs and equipment we used when we first started out on YouTube. But we still get asked a lot about how we record, and nowadays we've changed our process completely, so we thought we'd just go ahead and do an updated video. If you want to get straight to the how-to stuff, skip ahead. But first off, we just wanted to say that this is only one possible way to do it out of many possible ways. We're using this video to talk about the stuff we have experience with and would recommend after playing mobile games on YouTube for a few years. But there are, of course, a lot of ways to do it. Depending on the kind of mobile device you have, you don't need to spend much or maybe even any money at all to start YouTubing with it. We kept it pretty cheap for a long time, as we explained in our first video about our process. If you've got an iPhone or an iPad, it's pretty easy with the latest iOS versions. You can even record your phone screen and audio straight from your phone. You can do some basic editing of the video and then upload directly to YouTube with their mobile app. If you've got an Android device, apparently you can use the YouTube gaming app to record or some other apps which we'll link to in the video description below. We personally don't use Android devices, so we're definitely not experts or anything there. Yeah, the main thing about most of these apps is that they'll use up memory and processing power in your phone or tablet. We think they're fine for recording short video clips though. But if you want to do serious let's playing or speed building for example, you're probably going to want to record longer videos using your voice and doing some more complicated editing. And to do all of that, you're probably going to want to consider using more equipment. So this is where we get into our personal recording setup. For a couple of years now, we've been using an Elgato HD60 capture card, which is a piece of hardware specifically designed to record video and audio for mobile devices and consoles. We recently upgraded to an HD60 Pro, which is like the next level up from the HD60, which we were originally using. And for that, we've got to thank Elgato Gaming, who very kindly sent us this upgrade for free. And we also have to thank all of you guys, because the main reason that Elgato did that is because we've had such supportive and awesome viewers, so thank you! Seriously, thank you! Just to explain a little more, for those who don't know, Elgato's capture and streaming devices are used by literally hundreds of YouTube gamers and Twitch streamers, and there's a reason for that. They make good stuff. Like we said, their capture cards can record all kinds of video gaming devices like consoles and most importantly for our channel, phones and tablets. The HD60 Pro lets us record in a pretty sharp 1080p pixels at 60 megabits per second, which these days is a good standard for YouTube. The HD60 Pro plugs into your computer's motherboard. This has the big plus of giving it more power inside so it does all the video crunching stuff itself, which takes a big load off of our graphics card and CPU. At the time of us recording this video, a brand new HD60 Pro sells for probably around 150 to 200 American dollars, depending on discounts you can get at different online stores. The device we're using before, the HD60, sells for around 120 to 160 US dollars. Now, of course, neither of these devices is cheap, and to be honest, it took us a while to get one. Like we said, we instead used an old cheap process which we talked about in our first video. Yep, we made lots of videos using equipment which we already had or could easily afford, just trying to get better with each video. The most important thing for making gaming content is always going to be whether you can stick with it and keep improving your skills, not about how expensive your setup is. But if you've made enough gaming content that you think you want to upgrade to the next level, we think Elgato is the way to go. The first device we used, the HD60, records at a maximum of 40 megabits per second, but the nice thing about it is that it's much more portable compared to the HD60 Pro. The HD60 can be used externally without having to open up the guts of your computer. You literally just connect it with a USB cable. That's great if you're using a laptop and it's perfect for making gaming videos while traveling, which we've had to do a lot. But the HD60 Pro bumps up the sharpness and resolution of the recording to 60 megabits a second, and we definitely think that's made a difference with our mobile game videos. Still, if the thought of fiddling inside your PC is too scary, and I can identify because I didn't do this, you did, <laughs> yeah. go with the external version which you can just connect with a USB cable. Here's how we'd personally recommend using the whole Elgato setup. First, there's a process of installing the capture device. For an HD60 Pro, this is not difficult, but it does involve, as we said, opening up your PC case. 
Once you've taken off the side of the case, normally there are screws at the back on the left hand side looking from the front for doing this. Inside you'll see your motherboard with a whole bunch of cool computer tech attached to it. What we care about here is there being a spare PCI Express slot. These are rectangular shaped parts about the size of a single KitKat piece. This is where we slot in the Elgato. The Elgato itself has a bottom with little golden strips on this small fin. This is the bit that goes into that KitKat PCI slot. The PCI slot is usually a lot longer than this little fin, but that's fine. Your computer knows what to do with it. Before we actually install the card, however, here are some things you should do. First, turn off and unplug power from your PC. Second, make sure you don't have any static electricity on you so you don't fry the stuff inside your PC. We like to use an anti-static wrist strap, but the easiest way to do this is to touch a metal part of your case with your bare skin. Try and keep some skin against the metal of the case the whole time. At the very least, don't wiggle on the floor so you don't generate more static electricity. Third, open the case. Fourth, find that spare PCI slot you want to use. If there's a cover at the back of the case by that PCI slot, take it off first. Okay, so to install, take your Elgato, line it up so the ports with the holes for cables face the back of the case, then line up the fin with the gap in the PCI Express slot, then gently push in the card. It should feel a little stiff but not need a lot of force. Just push until it's all in. Then to finish off, if you have one, put back the screw you removed from the backplate cover into the top bit of the Elgato that should now be against the back of the case. Now put the cover back on the case, plug in the PC, and you're done. Okay, that was all a little technical, but the hard part is over. The Elgato is now installed and you should never need to fiddle with it again. All you need to do now is attach some cables. You need an HDMI cable to go into the Elgato, and probably an adapter at the other end to connect it to your smartphone. We use iPhones, so we have this lightning to HDMI connector. We've got the official Apple one, and we recommend that as any other makes may not work quite as reliably. First, connect the HDMI cable into the correct HDMI in port on the Elgato. It has two HDMI ports. One is for getting video in to record, and the other is for sending video out to a monitor, for instance. We want to get video into the Elgato, so make sure the HDMI is plugged into the right place. Here's our lightning to HDMI adapter. This is easy to set up. The fat end has an HDMI hole, so plug the other end of our HDMI cable into this and the skinny end has a lightning plug, so plug that into the lightning port on your iOS device. Everything is now connected. Another great thing about Elgato's capture devices, the HD60 or the HD60 Pro or any of the other ones, is that the official recording software you can use with them is a free download at their website. We'll link to it in the video description. There's a great walkthrough of this recording software which Sims Community recently did on their channel, and we'll link to that also. Once the Elgato software is downloaded and installed, we can start recording. The tool is called Game Capture. Looks pretty slick, right? That it does. On the left, we've got a preview screen of our video. Click over here on the right where it says Device to pick your device. This makes sure the resolution and so on is set up the best way possible for you. Once your video is showing up, you need to sort out audio. First, in-game audio. Now, for recording on YouTube, we recommend turning off the game's music to avoid infringing any copyrights, because that could be bad for your channel. For our videos, we usually just go with normal game sound effects without the game music. To get audio into Elgato, make sure your device is not muted. So on a phone, make sure to slide that little mute toggle up. And just like that, now we have in-game sounds. What about your voice? You obviously need some kind of microphone for that. We have a basic USB mic that we've used for years. It's okay, but not great. USB mics are super convenient though, as you can just plug and play. You could also potentially use a pair of earbuds with a mic attached, like the kind that comes with the iPhone. Try talking into your mic and see if those level meters bounce around in the live commentary section of Game Capture. If there's nothing there, click on that dropdown and just make sure your mic is selected. Okay, so you should now have video and game audio and voice commentary audio. All you have to do now is record. There's a big red record button at the bottom left of Game Capture. Click that and you're in business. Now, the Game Capture software has tons more features and settings. You can live stream with it, you can change your encoding settings and formats, you can do basic video editing inside of it. Yep, video editing. That's actually just as important as recording. We can't stress that enough. Editing is where the quality is. 
We can make a whole other video about how important editing is, but we'll just quickly mention the two programs we use. For editing videos, we use Adobe Premiere Pro, which we pay for, and for editing audio, we use Audacity, which is totally free. We've tried several free video editing programs over the years, like iMovie and HitFilm Express, and they all worked fine, but Adobe Premiere Pro is just super powerful with tons of features and just super stable and rock solid. Many YouTubers, as well as TV and movie professionals, also use it. There are tons of tutorials on YouTube for the editing programs we mentioned and for other editing setups, so hit the search bar to look them up. There's just too many for us to get yeah. into right now. And if you're interested in seeing a full breakdown of everything we use, all the hardware and software, we've got a long list at our website, make2tv.com. If you have any questions or tips of your own about game recording, please share them in the comments below. In the meantime, if you are new to our channel, feel free to subscribe because we have plenty more videos captured with Elgato on the way. Thanks for watching.